hello so in the last video we discussed about uh, that we are going to fit a line a straight line to a data something like this so now we are going to discuss little bit more that uh, what is the predicted line and why we are trying to fit a, a line and wh what what do you mean by best fit of line so how we do how do we uh, say that this is the best line I will try to explain you. So let's uh, we already discussed this data x and y. Now what we are saying is and this x and y data looks like something like this. I have commented the second line. It is just a scatter plot of x and y. So this is how it looks like x is along x axis and y is along y axis and this is uh, our data. So if somebody asks you that what you would like to fit uh, in this kind of data, definitely a straight line passing through uh, something like this nearby, nearby the origin will be a very good fit. So linear regression is a perfect model for this kind of approach. So once the line is fit, we know that uh, for any value of x, what will be the predicted value of y because we can extrapolate that line and uh, interpolate as well because we know the values of 6 uh, for 6 x is equal to 6 we know the values v x is equal to 5 we know and v x is equal to 4 we know and we see the pattern it's going like a straight line so if somebody asks that what is the value of y given x is equal to 5.5 we can definitely extrapolate from here and we see that it should be something in between like this it will be something like 55 or something like that so this is the benefit of uh, performing the linear regression now the question is that which line so let's assume that there we know that we pretend that we know that what is the best fit though we do not know but let's say y is equal to mx plus c we already know the equation of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c where m is equal to slope and c is equal to intercept this is very basic mathematics which everybody should know Mm. now and uh, we are defining the predicted line we are, are defining the uh, predicted line how we are defining for a given x m is 10 and c is minus 5 let's say this then once we have defined we will see that predicted values for each value of x we will get the predicted values of y so for x is equal to 1 we get 5 x is equal to 2 we get 15 x is equal to 3 we get 25 like this we get the values for x is equal to 6 y is equal to 55 these are the predicted values we define this line and the aim of using the stochastic gradient descent is to get these values m and the c value because we do not know what is the perfect values for these we can just estimate by seeing but that's not the good choice so that's why we use an algorithm like a stochastic gradient descent to come up with the best values of m and c but for the sake of purpose of showing you that how this predicted lines and will show up then i am taking an example so why predicted is this one let's remove this part and now let's do it once again so a scatter plot of x and y and just plot a line of x and y predicted we see this is the predicted line and dots are the actual data so we fitted this line on the basis of our hidden trial this, this is just a hidden trial we are seeing that the line is passing from the origin so we chose an intercept something nearby that is intercept is minus 5 and we also see from the data that for x is equal to 1 we have 10 x is equal to 2 we have 20 it's something like uh, 10 factor times of x that's why we chose 10 x 10x and intercept we can choose 0 as well let's see what happens when we fit plus 5 instead of plus 5 so if we do plus 5 then we will see that this line will go up see now this is this is again not a good choice we can we can see that and earlier choice was also not good because it was going below now let's just fit plus 2 and then try again now it is coming near let's try plus one again it is coming near let's try zero 
it's it's almost perfect so we can say this is the predicted equation for the, this is m is 10 and 0 0.1 is the intercept so here we have tried hit and trial this is not possible for the real scenario when we have a very big data or we have to we cannot do that so we we should come up with some kind of algorithm which automatically finds out these values for you parameters like slope and intercept also let's we have taken 10 but let's say if we choose 5 what happens let's see now see this line is completely out of uh, the best fit line which should be because it is completely out we, our values are going here but line is well, our predicted line is completely uh, going outside of that range let's do it like minus 5 let's see what happens now it's going more and more that way let's do plus so 15 now it's going there let's do l12 it's coming near so definitely there are two parameters which you have to optimize one is slope and the second is intercept i hope it, it is very clear that these two parameters are required to be found by the stochastic gradient algorithm so that you get the best fit and the best fit i assume that it is something nearby this but you do not know it is 0.1 or 0 0.01 you do not know it is 10 or 10.1 so that algorithm will be telling that how accurate we can fit let's take so this is almost perfect but we have to find it out using the all the possible combinations of uh, m and c slope and intercept using the stochastic gradient algorithm now let's see what is x x is a vector now right now so if you see and y is also a vector if you see the zeroth value this is 10 that means this is the first element of y if you see the second this is 10 if you see the third if you see the third it is 20 like this now this is the actual values of y what are the predicted values we have y underscore predicted so y underscore predicted is for zero value it is 10.01 so what i am trying to say is if you see the actual value for the first value we have 10 and the predicted value is 10.01 what is the error if you if somebody asking between two values Definitely we can do it like this. So error will come something like this. Okay, that's fine. Now so if somebody asks you what is the error, this is negative, um, but it is almost zero, but this is a negative error. For the second element, it is coming like this. Actual minus predicted. Third element, this like fourth element this is fifth element because everything starts from zero so these are the error values but see sometimes what happens is the predicted value is more like actual minus predicted comes out to be positive and sometimes actual minus predicted can come out to be negative so if you just somehow sum all these errors so if you see the first error which is e0 that will be y0 minus this this is first error for all the points data points i'm talking second data point we have this and so on e2 this is for the third data point so we have these errors right and we can see that errors are even even is this e2 is this and e3 is this these are the all the data points uh, no e2 these are the errors for all the data points so right so we have actual values and we have predicted values and we are trying to find the errors but 
some errors can be negative what i'm trying to say is like if you minus 10 minus 9.8 then this comes out to be positive error but if you do 10.2 it comes out to be negative error basically we want to find the total error in the complete data we have how many data points we can see by using len of y we have 19 data points so we will have 19 errors across the actual and the predicted data like we it will go from e0 till e18 so these are these are in total 19 errors in the data points we want to sum up and we want to get an estimate how much is the error at this point of time when, when the equation of line is this and if the error is too much we will try to modulate these values slope and intercept and who will modulate that is the algorithm the stochastic gradient that will modulate these values and they will try to shift a little bit values in these m and c and then the errors we will again see the errors we will again see what is the total sum of errors and then again we will change these values we will do this until we get a minimized value of all the all the sum of these errors these sum of these errors are called cost function so what i was saying is instead of adding like e0 plus e1 plus e2 what we will do is we will square and then add because some errors can be positive and some errors can be negative if you add them that will be cancelled out so but we, anyways whether the error is positive or negative when they the errors are added up they shouldn't be cancelled because two errors one positive one negative that is not zero that is two errors there are two errors so you have to take it out so you square it first like this and you do it you do it until e18 and you add all of them and then divide by the 90 this is the cost function this is what called as cost function so what do you do you see the cost function at a given point of time you see what is the error coming then you change the values of m and c algorithm changes it then again calculate the errors this is how it goes on till the point comes where the error becomes the minimum so now let's come to the cost function this is the cost function so this is individual values actual values minus predicted value and then square it and just add it till the ob number of observation where n is the number of observation here n is 19 so this will be y0 minus y1 y0 minus y predicted 0 square this is e0 this y i minus y hat is e0 square plus e1 square plus e2 square upon till you go e18 and upon 19 this is what is happening this is called cost function in the case of linear regression this is also called mean squared error this is what we want to minimize because we want to minimize the errors if the line is going far away if the line is going here the errors will be more you can you can see if the if, if we have if a current state is y predicted is this and we see like this then the errors will be more but the current state is like 0 0.5 or 0 0.05 and errors will be less but the algorithm doesn't know the actual values so it will start from some random values of slope and intercept and then it will keep on iterating till it get the best values and it comes near to the data cloud so in the next in the next video i will tell uh, discuss about what are the gradient of the slope and the intercept and then we will discuss about the how we actually code this from scratch so thanks for watching this video.